Welcome to the Sports Scouting Report Podcast with Lee Brickeen. Hi, everyone. You're listening to the Sports Scouting Report. We are recording. We have a, I'm Lee Burkeen, your, your host, and our guest today is one of the great young recruits for the class of 2022. That's right, 2022. Uh, we're, still, we're still dealing with 2021 players signing college scholarships all the way till August, believe it or not. And our guest today is one of the great young quarterbacks, and I think he's a sleeper. He's not a guy that you hear a lot about. You're going to be hearing a lot about this coming year. He's going to be a senior this coming season. Cole Milford at De La Salle High School in New Orleans, Louisiana. Cole, thanks for joining us today. Hey, how's it going? Good, man. You 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 know, you have a chance to do something that not a lot of kids have done from the, the city of New Orleans. You've played in stu- two state championship games as a quarterback already. You played in, yes, and you played against the same team, obviously St. Thomas More. I'm sure you don't want to play those guys again, or maybe you do to beat them for a third time. No, but, I, I want to beat them. <laughs> <laughs> but but y'all played them in 220 this year. Uh, had a great state title game. I mean, y'all played those guys down to the wire. Um. Unfortunately, y'all were a runner-up, but hey, what a great year, Cole, this year. And then, Thank you. And then in 2019, y'all played for a state championship against St. Thomas More at their field when it was like private, public, was separated. Y'all didn't play in the Superdome. Um, and this year, y'all played in Turpin Stadium in North Louisiana. What was that like, Cole, playing in North Louisiana at Northwestern State outside compared to playing in the Superdome? Uh, was and it was kind of cold, or was it kind of? I think it was rainy, or was it rainy um, for y'all's game? The weather was actually perfect football weather. Um, it wasn't. It wasn't that bad as far as like traveling. Um, I liked it a lot better than playing at their home field because St. Thomas More is a home field, like some colleges do. It, it's it's crazy how they get everything together, but it was it was a really cool experience. It wasn't it wasn't that bad to play at Nac in, in Natchitoches at Turpin Stadium. You know, the, the team this year had a lot of talent, a lot of seniors, a lot of four year starters, a lot of special kids. We're going to talk about them later in the show. The team coming back has a lot of talent still. Me and you talked about it yesterday, but there's a lot of talent coming back at De La Salle in, in New Orleans, your team. And you're going to be a senior this coming season. You have a chance to play in three state title games. I don't think a lot of kids have done that in New Orleans, three in four years. Um, what have you learned the most about playing in state championship games, Cole? I mean, from the first one to the second one, when you were a sophomore and then your junior year, I mean, obviously you were a little bit more focused, obviously not, probably not as nervous, I guess. Oh. Uh. Yeah, my my uh my sophomore year, I was I was pretty nervous. I mean, but at the end of the day, it was just another football game. Of uh, I'd say it took me about a quarter or two to to realize where I was at. And uh, my junior year, I was a lot more focused. I wasn't really nervous. Like I'd seen this team before, but the one thing I take away the most from state is that if you want to win state. You have to do every single little detail right, because one little thing is is, is going to take the game from you. Because you're you're playing against a great team, you're a great team, and it's really who's going to make the first mistake. And then the momentum, you know, whoever keeps that momentum right from the first half, second half. Yes, sir. Um, and then you play the great defenses. Y'all had a great defense. They had a great defense, and. Obviously, y'all had a great offense. They had a great offense. It's just, uh, you know, maybe like maybe your senior year will be the year y'all can win it all. Y'all still have a lot of talent coming back. We're going to talk about that. Cole, we're going to take a break. Don't go anywhere. When we come back, we're going to have more with Cole Milford, quarterback, class of 222, will be a senior next year for De La Salle High School in New Orleans, Louisiana. They were runner-up this year. Um, in high school football for their classification in the state championship game. Had a great year again. We'll be right back. Listen, whatever you're driving right now, Tommy Harvey wants it. Bring it in to Harvey Subaru, Lexus of Shreveport, Bossier City, or John Harvey Toyota. They're paying big bucks for all trades right now. 
They'll cut you a check right there. Tell them Lee sent you. Welcome back. You listen to the Sports Scouting Report. I'm your host, Lee Burkeen. Our guest today is Cole Milford, quarterback from De La Salle High School in New Orleans, Louisiana. Cole, um, talk about your talent. This past year, we were talking yesterday, and you had a pretty good stat year. I mean, a good balanced year. I mean, you're a good athlete. You run a 4-5 in the 40, very dual threat. You can throw the ball and run. You ran. You, you threw for 1,100 yards last year. You had 15 touchdowns passing, six rushing, 22 total touchdowns, and this is what I like: zero interceptions. Man, out of 114 pass attempts, zero interceptions. You got to be proud of that. Not many quarterbacks go through a whole season without an interception. Um, I I, I am really proud of not throwing inter- any interceptions, but it's. It's more of, of I'm more proud of having the focus and the film to study for every game and the preparation on those on those Thursday nights from Monday through Thursday nights that I was studying. It just makes me feel proud that that work wasn't for anything and that I didn't throw any picks this year. Um, Eric Sanchez, my QB coach, he. He, he made me the smart decision maker that I am today. And I'm forever grateful for him. But, yeah, it, 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 was, a lot of, it was a lot of work and it was a lot of preparation to study these teams and know their defenses inside and out. You know, speaking of your coach, Aero Sanchez, I know him. He's a trip, man. He's, he's, he's got a lot of compassion to the game. He's, a, he's one of those coaches that, you know, very emotional, loves the game, uh, fell in love with Louisiana not being from Louisiana. And speaking of coaches, it's really good that, that, that your coach, Sanchez, your quarterback coach, is coming back because Ryan Manali has left your head coach to go to Jesuit. And I'm glad that Eero Sanchez will be there because that's the guy that you learn with as your quarterback coach. That's going to mean a lot to you, right? Right. He's, I, I owe everything to him. I mean, I didn't start playing the position until going into my sophomore year. I, in part ball, I'd never played quarterback. Uh, my eighth and freshman year, I was playing safety. I was playing quarterback, but we weren't throwing the ball. It was just running, having fun, and just playing football. Yeah. But into my sophomore year, I had never learned how to throw a ball. And then Coach Benally sends me towards Coach Sanchez's way. and uh, He turned me into a dual-threat quarterback. He he made me the player I am today. You know, speak about Coach Manali. I mean, when he got to De La Salle, they were not a very good program. They, they didn't even win football games. And mm-hmm. he took this program from, you know, a team that wasn't even winning games to playing for state championships. And I know it's tough losing him, but, you know, it's a business where a lot of these guys have to do what's best for them. But I know that the school's going to hire another great coach, and you got, you know, Eros Sanchez, some other assistants still there that were part of this. But what did Coach Manali mean to you as a player, um, Cole? Um, he, coming up as a, as a park ball player, he would come and see me play, and I wasn't really getting attention from all these other high schools. And it, it meant a lot to see that a coach cared so much if, I went to his school or not. And so I did a spend a day over there. I really enjoyed it. The, the, the community over there is just really great. And he took me under his wing. I bought into what he was saying. And uh, he, he just, I got the job. We went to two state titles. And he, he, did, he really did do what was best for him. And I wish him luck. But... Um, at the end of the day, we have to go do what we have to do. I mean, we're, we're going to get a great coach in place of them, but we're, we're, we're going to be all right. Uh, Cole, you have a chance, I mean, in recruiting. I mean, you're six foot tall. You weigh 180 pounds, you told me the other day. But, I mean, you're, you know, you're a strong kid. You squat 415 pounds in the weight room. You're max on the squat, which is incredible for 180 pounds. You can see that explosion when you run at four or five in the forty. Now a lot of quarterbacks can do that. So your skill set's gonna fit 
a unique offense. It's not going to be everybody's offense because you can run the ball. And then your arm is pretty good. Your arm's getting better every year. And I know your senior year is going to be your chance to show your full ability, right, throwing the football and running, you know, coming up in 221. Yes, sir. What, what, um, yeah, what do you think of your arm and, and how it's become from, like, you know, you have to learn this. Like you said, you weren't a quarterback three years ago, so you've been – you haven't been doing this very long. It's it's more of just the amount of work I put in daily. Like today, I'm probably gonna go throw a football. I mean, I don't do I don't throw a football every day. I give myself breaks, but it's it's the it's the weight room. It's it's the the constant practicing. I'm practicing with Coach E two three times a week. Um, in the weight room four times a week. So it's it's really just me getting stronger and perfecting my craft. Yeah. Um, Coach, he said, I really haven't learned how to throw a football until I can teach somebody else how he's taught me how to throw a football. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. And what do you think you need to work on the most throwing? Is it out passes? Is it, you know, over the middle touch throws? Is it, you know, post passes? What do you think you need to work on the most for your senior year? So I think my short to mid range game is it's pretty like on point already, and obviously I could tweak things like I need to tweak things here and there. I'm not saying I'm perfect, but that's where I'm strongest at. So I'd really say my long ball. I didn't really get many chances to throw long balls last year. So hopefully, we'll throw long balls in traffic. I mean, we threw long balls last year, but it wasn't really like those throws that you had to make happen. You just got to put it out there, but right. it would it would definitely be my long ball. <clears throat> kind of like you were throwing like maybe late before the half throws, right? Like those 50-50 balls instead of like a planned post throw. Right. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, there's always those balls you see in the NFL before the half, throw a Hail Mary or – throw it up hopefully to get get a field goal, get in the field goal range, right, for your field goal kicker. But we're going to take another break. Cole, when we come back, I want to see if you want to brag on some of the seniors that have signed scholarships off the team this year. And what are they meant to you? Some of these guys that you're not going to be playing with anymore that were teammates of yours for two or three years. Some of these guys played four years in the program. We're going to take a break and come right back. Looking for a used car? Harvey Artos has three dealerships, which means three times the used vehicles. They've got everything from fuel-efficient compacts to luxury models, even hybrids, and certified pre-owned with a warranty. Check out John Harvey Toyota, Harvey Subaru, or Lexus of Shreveport, Bossier City. Welcome back. You listen to Sports Scouting Report. I'm your host, Lee Burkeen. Our guest today is Cole Milford, quarterback. From De La Salle High School in New Orleans is going to be a senior for the class of 222. Very underrated sleeper quarterback. Uh, Cole, let's talk about some of your seniors that are not going to be able to play with you anymore, like on the team in 2021. They're they're graduating this year. Um, several kids signed scholarships off your team. Some are still going to sign. But what do you think of Jamarian Peterson, the, the big DN that signed with ULL? We'll start with Jamarian, who he looks the part, man. He looks like a one of those stud defensive ends you see it, even in the SEC. But ULL's getting a steal with Peterson, right? Uh, 100%. Whatever school got to Myron would be getting a steal. He's he's a great he's a great person. Um, he's he's one of those guys that's going to go to go to school and then get right into football with the same kind of energy. He's not going to sleep all day at class and then go right in, all right, it's time for football. No, uh -huh. he's going to go through class, he's going to get through school, and he's going to make sure he has everything done and that he is prepared for every Friday night. Well, Saturday night now. But he's, he's, he's a really good player, and I respect him. Let's go ahead and talk about your stud running back that graduates this year. Montreal Johnson, six foot 205 with 4.5 speed, sign, also with ULL. Uh, Montreal, when healthy, he's a, he's a beast, right? When he's when he's a hundred percent. Yeah, he, I I'd even go to say he's more than a beast. He he 
it looks like he floats when he runs. I mean, he's he's just insane. He, he had four touchdowns in the state game, um, which was really our, our, our game plan. I mean, if, they, if they're going to beat us, they're going to have to stop Montreal first. And then, of course, we had other other ways to beat them. But right. um, it went down to the water because they couldn't stop Montreal. And that just says a lot about him. And he's he's one of the most humble players I've ever met. He's he's not one of those guys to to brag about what he's done and what he has. And he's just he's just there to work and have fun playing the game he loves. Yeah, I think he'll he'll probably have an NFL future if he continues to to continue to get better. Him and uh, Peterson both going to ULL. Who's six three two forty DN. Your other running back that you're going to miss. I didn't think he got the. The, the accolades he did at the end, but Byron Phillips, man, bowling ball, 5'8", 213 pounds. Also, he's going to Louisiana Tech. But Byron Phillips was was your go-to guy, right, when they were keying on Montreal? Uh, 100%. I mean, if I wasn't giving the ball to Byron, I was running it. But Byron, he had just as many carries as Montreal this year. Just his were hard-fought yards. He, he he wasn't. He's not the type of back to just bounce it out or avoid somebody with a with a juke. He's he's gonna run straight through you, and you're definitely gonna feel it. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if you're getting hit like that, fifteen twenty times a game, by the end of the game, you're not gonna want any piece of it. That's a great way to describe him. I saw him last uh, two years ago when y'all were playing that team in Florida. Uh, the Pensacola team came down, and he just ran right over a 230-pound linebacker, and I was like, man, that kid's going to be yeah. good. Um, you saw it in the state game. Yeah. I, I remember he, he, had, he had two dudes on his back, one in front of him. He threw the, the one in front of him to the ground, put the kid over his shoulder, and then the, the third guy took three guys to take him down. And while he's doing all this, he's, he's getting five yards. It's incredible. And then it ended up being like a 15-yard <laughs> He threw some kids off of him and, and just got got the bit, got the working. And he's wearing the defense down, so when you run, they're tired. <laughs> um, yeah. Another player that signed, and he's had injuries through his career, but he was able to bounce back his senior year. His dad, Norman Hand, the late Norman Hand, played it for the New Orleans Saints and Ole Miss. But Trey Hand, it was good to see Trey Hand. He's going to Arkansas Monticello, but. Trey's kind of like Montreal. When healthy, he's a very good player, huh? D Taku's six foot, about two hundred ninety pounds. Yeah, he he's had a tough, tough. He's had to he's had to eat a lot of tough things because he's he's been injured most of his high school career. And honestly, we were we were expecting okay, we're gonna need some more guys to step up. But Trey really filled the role. We didn't know how he was gonna play because he's been injured so much. But Trey really stepped up for his senior year, and he really made that de- defensive line better with Dewan Tillis and Jamar and Peterson. Speaking of Dewan Tillis, he's walking on at Tulane at 5'11", 250 pounds. He's quick enough to be a linebacker. He's strong enough to be a defensive end. Runs about a 4'8". I think Tulane's getting a steal. And also, Roderick Williams is walking on as a safety to Tulane. He was a good player this year. And I want to mention this. Three guys that haven't signed yet in this class. Cole, I mean, I can't believe they're still around. I can, but because there's so many kids still trying to get scholarships. But John Martin, your big guy on the O-line, 6'4", 345 pounds of muscle. He hasn't signed yet. What do you think of John? I think he's going to end up going somewhere. But what do you, what do you think of John? He was a four-year starter. Um, I'm definitely going to miss him as far as uh... – Knowing I'm going to be protected in the pocket and knowing I'm going to have a clean pocket four out of five plays every single time. But uh, John, John's a he, he's a future valedictorian. Like he's he's smart. He's just as smart off the field as he is good on the field when he's when he's playing football. He doesn't he in the classroom. He's a he's a beast and on the field he's a beast. And I'm surprised that some SEC schools haven't offered him yet. And it it it, it bothers him, but he knows he's, he's going to play college football and that he's going to get his education paid for. So he's, he's going to take – actually, I think he signed with Columbia. Oh, did he? Columbia? 
Okay. Well, he's going to a big time academic school, and another guy that's that blocked for you that you're going to miss, and I'm sure he'll go somewhere. He's a he's a college prospect. Is another offensive lineman, Holden Karnikowski, yeah, who, who's six three two ninety, and you know another stud that you know I don't he didn't sign yet, right? I think he'll end up going somewhere, but he's he's a he's a good player. He really is. I mean. I, as far as I know, I don't I don't even know who my next center is next year, and it it's going to be hard to adjust to having because the, the one of the guys that are going to have to step up are not going to be as big as him. So I think some of those a gap plays that we have are just not going to be there as much because mm-hmm. of how good Holden was at getting to those linebackers when it was an even front. Or when it was an odd front and he had a nose guard, getting him out the gap or blocking him left or right so a running back can make these plays happen. Well, I'm going to give a shout out. His brother's coming back. He looks like they look like twins, you know. But his brother, yeah. his brother's got as much ability or more than than Holden, right? His younger brother's at least he's coming back to block for you. His brother's got a chance to be really good. Yeah, he his brother his brother's uh, he's a great kid. I mean. He he started as a sophomore in his first varsity game, just uh, just like me. Or he played as a freshman. I'm sorry. My first starting varsity game was his first start starting varsity game, and it was against Warren Easton. And him and Justin both coming in as freshmen. They they balled out their freshman year. They balled out their sophomore year, and those are two guys that I'm really depending on as far as my offensive line next year, along with Tim Donnelly. Yeah, and, and speaking of Tim, he's a guy that we're going to get to him uh, when we talk about the juniors, but his dad, Tim Sr., played at LSU as a walk-on. I remember his dad being at LSU and finishing. He stayed all four or five years. And they're both, what's crazy, Cole, they're both the same size. I remember his dad was 6'5", and he's 6'5". His dad was 300, he's 300, like the identical as his dad. <laughs> yeah. Um, before we finish with the seniors, but I can't not mention your two receivers that graduate in Nick Tate and Nixon Bernard, two guys. What, what did it, those two guys meant a lot to you? They're not going to be coming back. And obviously I hope they get a college opportunity. Nick Tate was very slivery. I call him slivery as a receiver. He had that deceptive speed. And then Nixon Bernard had great hands and, uh, and also, Shamar Keelan uh, has graduated on defense at linebacker. So, what a group, huh? And what do you think of your receivers, these two guys, Nixon and Nick Tate? What it means to what, what it means to you, those guys, the last two years? So, um, since eighth grade year, I've been working out with Nixon and Nick, and my workout partners are gone now. But the grind doesn't stop. But these these guys are probably they probably mean the most to me out of my senior class because they're they're the guys that made the place for me. They're the guys that caught the ball. They're the guys yeah. Yeah. that were always in a good mood when we weren't having a good day at practice. They're the guys that we get upset when somebody missed practice. They were the guys to hold everyone else accountable. And they really did their job. They didn't worry about catch, like if, if there was a game that we weren't throwing the ball, they it didn't matter to them. They were going to go block the man in front of them to the best of their ability, 100% yeah. every play. Unselfish teammates. That's what you need to win championships. And, Cole, we're going to take a break. When we come back, I'm going to ask you who you like. You told me yesterday you had a couple of teams you like colleges growing up. Um, and then we're going to talk about your guys that are coming back. There's a, The good news, there's a lot of talent coming back. At De La Salle. There's enough talent for y'all to continue this for a state championship run in 2021. We're, you're listening to the Sports Scouting Report. Our guest is Cole Milford, the quarterback at De La Salle in New Orleans, Louisiana. I'm your host, Lee Burkeen. We'll be right back. So, hey, guys, just wanted to take a minute to tell you about Harvey Autos. If you need a new or used car, there's three great dealerships right here worth checking out. John Harvey Toyota. Harvey Subaru, and Lexus of Shreveport, Bossier City. Low prices, honest people, tell them Lee sent you. Welcome back. You listen to the Sports Scouting Report. 
Uh, our guest today is Cole Milford, uh, the quarterback who's only a junior, going to be a senior this coming football season for D. LaSalle High School in New Orleans, Louisiana. Cole, we talked about your senior teammates that are graduating this year, but you got a lot of talent coming back uh, for this program to continue to, to knock that door down, man, and, and win it all next year. You got another shot, but there's some good players. Your fullback, I, I like him. Chris Baxter, he's coming back. I think he's a D1 fullback, 6'1", about 215 in weight. Uh, you got a, a kid at receiver that's a young guy that got some experience, Herbie, Louise Yawn. Um, you've got a punter who's a tight end sometimes for you, and Contrell Molette, whose dad is Marlon Favorite, who played football at LSU, defensive tackle. Give a shout-out to Marlon Favorite, who, who teaches and trains kids, as you told me, in New Orleans. Um, we talk about Tim Timothy Dolan, who's going to get his first year to start. He's been hurt. Uh, 6'5", 300-pound offensive lineman. Frankie Bentley, uh, a big-time D tackle, I think could be a D1 player, 6'4", 265. Noel Ursch, who's a DN, 6'3", 220. Another DN, Tyler Lalonde, who's 6'3", about 235 pounds. And a D tackle, Raymond Cole, 5'10", 280. So there's a lot of talent coming back. And we're going to talk about your brother, who was at De La Salle. We're going to talk about the rival game y'all going to have next year. He's at Hanville now. But what do you think of these teammates I just mentioned as the core to keep this thing going at, at De La Salle for this coming season? Yeah, I mean, these guys these guys mean everything to me. They're my guys. These are the guys that I will be going out with. These are the guys that I could possibly play my last downs of football with. So uh, they, they all want the gold as bad as I do. But our goal for this year is to take the season one week at a time. And we're going to get better one week at a time. We're going to train during this off season one day at a time. And, and if we're not getting better than we were yesterday, then we're not satisfied. And I think that's, that's what really makes this group special because they're never satisfied with average. They're never satisfied with doing a little bit extra. They always go the extra mile to make sure we're getting our work in and that we're not taking this opportunity for granted because we do play for one of the top programs in the state. So they, it, it, it's, it's, it's really the culture we have at Telesat. I want to mention this, too, and I want to brag another a little bit more. But Chris Baxter, just to tell you, Cole, he might, have, he might be one of the best fullbacks in the state as a blocker, this guy punishes people like a tank. <laughs> I mean, he really, he really does. Um, a big time, uh, 2021 recruit, uh, Colby cage. We, we were playing against them, the Holy cross in the scrimmage. And I remember that they, they started jawing at each other and he was like, I don't need Colby cage. stole Chris, I don't even know who you are. And <laughs> I, I bet you Colby cage, knows who he is now after that um, that's, that's <laughs> the hardest i've ever seen chris hit somebody but, maybe, maybe chris will get uh, some carries too you know rewarding this year we'll get some carries kind of like y'all did this year with byron phillips you know byron ended up getting carries his senior junior year um another thing the punter Contrell, you know more than favorite son he's a pretty good punter he's not only a good punter he's got the best hands on the team at really? wide receiver wow Yes, he's got he's got these long, ginormous hands, and he catches everything I throw at him. That's good. And it doesn't matter if it's with one arm tied behind his back; he's going to catch the ball no matter what. And look, oh, and what, what's crazy here, Cole, is that your high school team coming back next year might have one of the best defensive lines in the state, even though. Peterson signed with ULL, even though Trey Hand signed. This could be one of the best D-lines in the city of New Orleans. That's good for the, for your team, you know, to have a great defense in the front four. You know, when you got Frankie Bentley, Tyler Lalonde, and Noah Ursh and Raymond Cole, I mean, that's a heck of a crew to build around on the defensive line. It, it, it really is. And Coach Creech, our D-line coach, has done wonders with those guys. Um. I don't think Noel started playing football until he got into high school. So he, he really didn't have anything to build off of. But um, And Ramon was actually 
Ramon Cole was actually a baseball player. Huh. Cause he came over. Um, uh, Tyler Long, when he came from St. Martin, and he, he had a really good year this year, but unfortunately he got hurt before the state game uh, against Edie White. So he was he was doing really he was he's he's a really solid player, and then Frankie Bentley that's that's just somebody I don't want to get on his bad side. He's, <laughs> he's a stud that kid. Off the field, off the field, he's the sweetest person ever, but he knows how to flip the switch. And once he flips that switch between those whistles, I don't want to be on the other side of the ball from him. Yeah, and he started at Rommel High School way back in the day. Yeah, Archbishop he did. Rommel. Yeah. Speaking of speaking of transfers, we got to give your your brother a little a little uh, a little time here, a little little mention. And there's going to be a rival because you grew up in that Hanville area in Luling. You and your brother, your brother Jude Milford was at De La Salle, but didn't play last year. He's now at Hanville. He's going to be a senior as a linebacker, safety. 5'11", 200 pounds, and maybe bigger by, by fall. But he's not only your brother. You're not only going to play against them, but he's going to be on the defense. You're going to be on the offense. What do you – is there any, is there any <laughs> talk going on right now about, hey, man, who's going to win that game between Hanville and De La Salle? And, and you got your little brother – I say little brother, y'all at the same age, but having him across from you, what's that going to be like? Oh, uh, it's – Jude, my dad, Jude, Jude Milford, Jude, your brother Jude. Yeah, so my dad just says he doesn't want to be in the house the, the week of the game. <laughs> um, but no, he's. I mean, we're 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 gonna go and play football and do our thing. But uh, we're brothers, and at the end of the day, uh, we're we're gonna take care of each other. We're not gonna do anything too extra. But this is this is like bragging rights of all bragging rights when it comes to our family, like. This is this is it all. Like I, I, I might not ever play against him again. So if I lose this, it's it's over for me. But if I win, he's it, it's over for him. But um, I'm pretty sure the game's week seven. Um, so we both have a little bit of time to prepare and get and get ready for that game. But uh, he's my he's my big twin brother, and we're at the end of the game. We're gonna shake hands like we always do. Are y'all gonna train together that same week? Oh no! <laughs> Maybe <laughs> off season we're not going to train together that week. Yeah, that would be kind of crazy training the same week. Y'all are going to play with one another. Um, and then what's crazy? Hanville's going to have a good team. Y'all are going to have a good team. It's going to be a pretty good game because Hanville. So, y'all don't have so, to. Y'all not competing for the same title because one's private side, one's public. But right. But Hanville's got a chance to go uh, compete for a title on the private side next year. Yeah, they they do. They they have a really good squad over there, and Ju going over there just made their defense even better. Ju's been playing football. I mean, varsity football since his freshman year. He played he played against uh, big teams like Carr and St. August freshman year. Yeah, and this is the Carr and St. August from a couple of years ago. Yeah, the loaded ones where everybody was a prospect. Oh, he played against, he played against U Lab when they had all those big time recruits. Um, he, he's, he's definitely not worried about really anybody else in the state. He's, he's played against the best of the best since he's been a freshman and there, Hornville's getting a really good leader out of him. He's already talking about it. His defense, he's going to make sure everybody's good and he's holding everybody accountable over there. So he's bringing a little bit of that Celestial private school culture over, over to public school. So. Yeah, and, and look, not only did did your coach Manali go to another school, but you me and you talked about it, but Catholic High Baton Rouge, who won the state championship this year in five A on the private side, their coach left Gay Fertitas going to Louisville College football after winning two state championships in four years. Thirty eight year old Gay Fertitas now an assistant coach at Louisville College. It's crazy the same week Manali left, the same day. For Tita leaves Catholic High. You 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 told me you knew about that too. That was crazy too, right? With uh, yeah, it is crazy. But um, coaches are gonna leave for their for their career. Um, he obviously went to the next level, 
and I think Coach Malley could coach at, at the next level, but he has other plans for himself. So, I mean, I, I hope Catholic's head coach does well at the next level, and I hope he does well for his career. But um, I, I have no idea who, who Catholic's going to try and bring in for their, their head coaching spot. I'm sure there's a lot of people wanting that job. I'm sure the principal at your school – at De La Salle has gotten probably 5,000 resumes, I would bet. Oh, 100%. I think he told my mom the other day some crazy number, like around 400 applicants the afternoon of Coach now leaving. And I'm sure they're from all over. They're from Texas. I'm sure they're from Alabama, Louisiana. But they're going to get a state championship coach because it's a great job. And what, Ren- what Coach Manali did with this program is just incredible, building it from scratch. You know, when I think of De La Salle, Cole, before you were born, I think of the late Marquise Hill, you know, that played for LSU and the New England Patriots, <clears throat> six foot eight defensive end. I think of Jordy Holtberg that played basketball at LSU. Derek Pope was a fullback at LSU. They had several kids go back in the 60s and 70s with, in the 80s with Coach Zimmerman uh, back in the day. Uh, but what a program now. I mean, it's when you got seven to eight kids signing college scholarships every year, the program has arrived. And your class, your class has a chance to have about seven or eight kids sign. Um, speaking of that, for the listening audience, you told me your favorite two colleges growing up are. Who, who are your two favorite colleges? Tell everybody. Uh, Ole Miss and Auburn. Tell everybody and, why you like Ole Miss and Oxford. Uh, Ole Miss, I just. So before I fell in love with football, I was more of a, a baseball player, and I really liked watching Ole Miss play. Okay. Bianco, uh, Bianco. The coach, Bianco over there is a pretty good coach. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, uh, and then then I, started, I, I fell in love with the game of football, and I started watching them play, and I think, I think they have a really good program over there. Is it the jerseys, the powder blue? Oh, yeah, the jerseys are beautiful. I, I just love their jerseys. i, I got to give it to Ole Miss. You know, there's not a lot. I mean, there's people in Louisiana, they don't like Ole Miss because of LSU, the rival. But, man, those uniforms, you got to give a you got to give an Academy Award for those uniforms. Those, <laughs> those, those, uh, those blue jerseys, man, those are, those, are, those are nice. And then yeah. your other school, why do you like Auburn? They just lost their coach to Central Florida, uh, Malzahn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um when I was when I was younger, I was probably about I can't I, I might have been like either ten, eleven, twelve years old. I was sitting in the living room with my dad, and they were they were losing at Alabama, right? And this isn't this this wasn't the return field goal oh, that they that's, had. That's what I was going to ask you, like through the goalposts. Yeah. So he, I can't remember who the quarterback was, but he just threw the ball up. It was either against Alabama or Georgia, but I was just like, I was just like, Dad, like, I feel like something's about to happen, and he just throws the ball up, right? The DB misses the ball, he whiffs on it, hits him in the helmet, and the receiver catches it and runs 80 yards for a touchdown. That was Auburn. Yeah, and my dad, my dad looks at me, he goes, that looks like the bluegrass legend, and I was just like, I was just like, I didn't, I didn't know what the bluegrass legend was and then i looked it up and i thought it was pretty identical but yeah that's why i yeah. like auburn yeah, the, the bluegrass was i think lsu kentucky devry henderson um devry yeah. caught a, it was like 10 seconds left in the game and they were on their own like 20 yard line and the ball was tipped he catches it over the middle and bam he, he scores on a long catch and run and most of the people cole that went to that kentucky game had left the game already and I had a friend who was leaving the game, getting on one of those buses that you take back to his hotel. He right. didn't even know LSU won until he got to his hotel room. Oh, wow. Because half the stadium <laughs> left, okay? And they were like, oh, this is over, man. Ten seconds left, down by touchdown. They got one play left. It's over. You know, and so everybody you know left. What? So you, you can never leave, right, till the final play. Right. you got to compete. Never leave. That reminds me of Peyton Manning. It was one of his comeback games. He was he was in, I'm pretty sure it was a playoff game. Um, he was playing with the Colts at the time, and 
they go down a couple touchdowns and it's, it's getting later at night. It's like the third quarter and it's not looking good for him. So he ends up coming back and winning the game, right? Well, meanwhile, he's got family and friends turning off their TVs, going to sleep, and he's on the plane on the way home. And he's, he, he, he said this in an interview or something. And he's getting all these text messages like, hey, man, I'm sorry. Like, you'll get him next year. It, it's all right. You don't have to worry about losing. And meanwhile, he's like, what do you mean? I just won the football game. You <laughs> right, missed the- right. I'll, I'll share one that your dad would remember. They call it the Immaculate Reception. It was in 1974, okay, before I was a little kid then, but the Pittsburgh Steelers were playing the Oakland Raiders to go to the Super Bowl, and the game had had like three seconds left in the game. The Steelers were on their own 30-yard line, and Terry Bradshaw throws a pass, who won four Super Bowls, and Cole, he hits a helmet of a player, and the, (laughs) the ball goes straight up right in like in sync with Franco Harris running the running back. Right. And he runs it in for 60 yards, and they win the game. Wow. And after that win, they not only go to a Super Bowl, but they win four Super Bowls in nine years. Wow. And if that play doesn't happen, who's to say they would have ever won a Super Bowl? It started it. It started the, you know, the right. the, the success. The and if it, they call it the immaculate reception. So between that, Derry Henderson, and then that alley-oop, at Michigan and Colorado, Cordell Stewart threw a bomb, a Hail Mary. We were talking about Hail Marys earlier. And it was caught in the end zone with no time left to beat Michigan in the big house, which was crazy, wow. you know, when they were really winning the whole game against Colorado. Cordell Stewart, obviously, is from John Eric High School in New Orleans. Played mm-hmm. a long time in the NFL. But, Cole, it was a treat having you, man. I mean, I wanted to introduce you to the state and – and a lot of coaches hear this, a lot of recruits, a lot of colleges. And I know you're going to have a great senior year. You have an opportunity to play in three state championship games. You could, you have a chance to go play. I don't know if anybody at your school has played in three. I don't think uh, I don't think y'all well y'all didn't play in a state championship game prior to uh, under Manali. So, yeah. um, I mean, we played we played for one way back in the day against. Jesuit, and it was before the Superdome was built, and we lost that one. Yeah, but I was yeah. we've been to three out of the past four years. I've played in two already, and as a starter. And my main goal this year is to take it home and get De La Salle High School of New Orleans their first state championship. You know what's crazy too? If you can, if you're able to play in three, it'll be three different locations. Probably it'll be the Superdome finally. I hope so. I was really excited for that uh, last year, but it, it didn't happen because of COVID. But I really hope it's in the Dome this year. That way it gives me some motivation to get back there. Three locations, three title games. It's crazy. And But, look, man, keep doing what you're doing. You're a hard worker. You're very mature. Um, Eero Sanchez, shout out to him for working with you as a quarterback training. Uh, coach Manali, good luck to him at Jesuit. And then I'm sure you're going to have a phenomenal coach hired in the next – I would say next two or three weeks, I would think, because y'all going to have the who's who in line to get that job to continue this success at your school in New Orleans at De La Salle High School. Uh, my memory, i got to share this for you and your family, Cole. My memory of your school was in 1990. JFK was being filmed in New Orleans, you know, about John F. Kennedy, the president. Right, right. And my cousin was in casting. He was in casting for the movies. And they had a casting mm-hmm. call at your high school. And so oh, really? I, I was actually, my, my thrill of life was was sitting behind a desk interviewing people for movie roles as a kid. Mm-hmm. Right, right out of high school. And it was, I was sitting inside your school. And they were doing it at the school in 1990. Wow. And around the school for like three miles there were people in line with, with paper and pen, trying to interview for the movie as extras. So, a little tidbit for you there for your high school. I, there should be some kind of picture or something there w- involving that or something, uh, because that ended up being a great movie, JFK, the movie. So, but um, yes, 
But look, man, again, good luck to you. Um, we'll stay in touch. You're going you. to be in our preview magazine this September. We talked about that. Along with all the kids that you mentioned, all your teammates that are coming back, and then some other ones, uh, some young guys I'm sure you all going to have and are going to rely on some sophomores probably this coming year. Um, um, and, and, and also running back T.J. Martin and wide receiver Makai Pairs. Those are two really big players that we're counting on next year. They're going to be juniors. They're going to have to step up, which is a good thing, uh, losing some of your, your veteran players at receiver, like uh, the guys Nixon and Tate. Uh, but that that's going to be a good thing. You're going to have some – and I'm glad you got some receivers coming back to build around, uh, especially Moreland Favorite's son who's coming back uh, to help you out with the best hands probably, probably in the city. Uh, don't hang up. Cole, I'm going to end the show. Everybody can go to our website, LAFootballMagazine.com. We've got articles this week. Jace Lejeune has interviewed some coaches, um, and also our interns have also done a good job of doing interviews. Be sure to go to LAFootballMagazine.com to read those articles on different schools in the state and recruits. We'll see you Friday. We have the head baseball coach for ULL Raging Cajuns on, on Friday. You're going to enjoy that this Friday. We'll see you Friday. Thanks for listening to the Sports Scouting Report podcast with Lee Brookings.